I was injured August 19th, 2006 by a roadside bomb in Afghanistan, um, the Korangal Valley. It was my one year wedding anniversary. And then seven, seven days later, later, my wife gave birth to our first child. So we had a lot going on. Um, it's kind of like my funny way of God saying that I'll never forget my wedding anniversary date. But um, I spent two and a half years uh, at Brook Army Medical Center. 47% uh, of my body was burned. Um, had over 45 different surgeries on my face, hands, legs. Um, and once the arm bumped, you got me back together. I kind of transitioned into finding my new normal. Medically retired in the fall of 2008 and started working for a defense contract company as a program manager and realized it you know, kind of wasn't what, really what I wanted to do. I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but that was going to be in the Army for life. My parents, my dad served, my brother in law served, my brother served. So it's just kind of like the family business. But that's what I was going to do. And that didn't happen. So it was kind of figuring out what I needed to do and what I liked to do. And ended up uh, finding a place here in Houston, working for a uh, insurance, wholesale insurance company. And I'm enjoying it. So it's, uh, it's pretty good. I've got three beautiful kids, Addison, Quentin, and Emerson. And, you know, it's great. I think serving in the military is um, something that, as most people know, only 1% of the United States ever, do, ever does it. And so it's hard to convey to someone who hasn't served, but it's with anything you put yourself in front of, you put yourself behind something else. And I think if you can visualize and take away that something is greater than you, then you can kind of see what it's like to be in the service and um, the greater good of your country and your love for it. Um, I wouldn't have changed anything that happened to me. Um, I think it happened for a reason and I volunteered for it. And I think that the injuries that I sustained would have happened to someone else. And I don't think I would put them on anyone else. I think, um, even though it was a long road to recover from burn injuries, uh, it was a blessing. I got to you know, meet the President of the United States. Um, he painted me and some things have come out of it. Friendships pushing me to places I never thought I would go on the rehab side of what my body can do and adjusting to what um, a person with disabilities has to go through on a daily basis. Most people don't realize um, I didn't when I was a kid, you know, you think you're Superman and you don't understand someone that does have a disability, what, what their daily struggle is. And so it really has kind of opened me up to see what other people go through that weren't in the service that have disabilities and um, the struggles they have and their daily life and how to make that better. And so that's what I'm kind of pushing towards is, you know, I want to be defined as the wounded veteran, you know. I think I want to be defined as a father, a loving husband, a leader that's um, in his community still giving back. You know, my headstone's not going to read Jay Barclay, wounded veteran. You know, I don't want I want that to be the last thing on there. I met President Bush a couple of times. Um, the first time I met him, he was coming to see the Center for the Intrepid opening at Brook Army Medical Center that had all this uh, private donation money, state-of-the-art um, equipment. <clears throat> and he shows up and there's eight of us sitting in the room and he looks at me and I stand to attention. He's like, Captain Barclay, looks like your modeling career's over. And everyone just you know, busted out laughing. And um, that was my first introduction to him, knowing that and getting to talk to him and he's really relatable and then transitioning to being part of Team 43 and the Warrior Open and having a personal relationship with him. And then finding out that he painted me was crazy. 
because if I think back to him saying, looks like your modeling career is over. And then, well, I guess it's not over because <laughs> you painted me. But um, I don't know. I, I think it's an unbelievable achievement and opportunity that most people don't get in their lifetime. Um, my parents, my dad called me and said, you know, you're going to be a, you're going to tell your grandkids about this. They're going to tell their kids about this. Um, so it's a, it's a true honor for myself and my family, for sure. To be painted by the president, first you think of, before I saw it as one, what is it good? Is it, you know, two, you know, what light is it going to be in? What, what purpose is it for? And once you dive into that, and, and I saw the photo, the painting for the first time, I was, you know, taken away by how he really caught um, not just my injuries, but, you know, who's behind the painting, who's in, you know what I mean? Like, who's behind the eyes, um, my feelings, you know, my personality. I told him he could have had the hairline come down a little bit farther, but, um, and to go around and see the other soldiers and Marines that were painted, other veterans, and to see their transition and their story behind it, and then reading in the book with the stories that go along with it, it's really amazing. Um, for him to do that, to shed light on you know, veterans, their road afterwards, what they're gonna do in the private sector, to be community leaders, to be leaders of companies, um, to help you know, guide these guys and show that, hey, I'm here with you, I know that I made the decision for you guys to, to go to war, and I'm not gonna forget about you. And so I think that's um, a really awesome message for, for myself and other fellow uh, veterans from the 9-11 to post 9-11 to you know, take with them.